So I realized that August 2019 is my 10-year anniversary talking about movies on YouTube. That's crazy to me. I have seen a lot of different changes over the course of these 10 years. Now, you might look at my current channel and say, hey, it says you started it in 2011. What gives? If you haven't been with my channel for a while and maybe you're a newer viewer, you never saw my very first channel, which was called Quick Movie Reviews. That was my first channel, doing movie reviews here, and it was in 2009, the very first film I ever reviewed was Hayao Miyazaki's Ponyo. And the goal was to review movies really, really fast. Nobody else was doing that on YouTube at the time. In fact, movie reviews in general on YouTube weren't as common. There were certainly channels doing them, but it was nowhere near like it was today. So the idea was, at first, well, it won't be that much work, if I just have to make every review be like a minute long. And that will be easy because I had a normal job at the time, you know, and it wasn't like I had all that much free time. I worked five days a week. And so seeing a movie every single Thursday and then reviewing it was a little hard at first. And just as a warning, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might hear some stories repeated that you know, but I'm just going to talk about the history of what I wanted to do and and what I've been able to do since starting, and also obviously give a big thank you to you guys. When I started this channel, I had really no idea what YouTube was. I, I didn't know that you could make money. I had no idea you could make money, in fact. And I didn't make any money for three years. And I still reviewed at least one movie every single weekend. I don't remember ever missing a weekend to be honest. I think I always had at least one video up a week, and if there wasn't a new release that I saw, I would review a classic or a film that I just wanted to talk about. And that consistency helped me maintain some relevancy and build an audience here on YouTube. Obviously, movies are something I'm very passionate about, and so it wasn't hard for me to talk about them. In fact, it, it kind of felt like it was medicine in a weird way because nobody ever loves their life all the time. And so having movies to watch have always given me something to appreciate or look forward to, even when life wasn't always the best. So when I started my YouTube channel, I was working five days a week, like I said, for a school system. And I would have to get up at 5 a.m. and be at work by 6 a.m. And at the time, I didn't know what advanced screenings were, and obviously I wasn't gonna get into them, and so, I would go to a Thursday night, midnight showing, of whatever the big release was that week. There was one theater near my house at the time that did the midnight showings. Nowadays, you get the 7 p.m. showings on Thursday. It's amazing. But 10 years ago, some theaters would do Thursday midnights. And usually it was for a bigger movie. Some movies didn't get those at all. So on Thursday nights, I would go and I would see whatever the big movie was at midnight, get home from that theater at like 2, 2.30 in the morning, work all night on that review, edit it, post it, get it out to you guys, and then not sleep and just go to work at 5 a.m. <laughs> Gratefully, at the time, that was just on Thursday nights, so Fridays were particularly hard at work. There was a connection there that I was getting that I just wasn't getting anywhere else. I didn't have friends that I could talk about movies with, and most of my family members didn't really care about it either. And so the main reason I started a YouTube channel was just to connect with other people who loved movies too, because I didn't have anybody in my life that did. And so I, I needed that as an outlet. That's why it's never really felt like work to me. Like there are days where I film a review that I don't necessarily get excited about shooting and there's obviously movies I go to see that I would never go to see if I wasn't reviewing it for you guys but it's never felt like the other jobs I've had film has always been where I feel most comfortable and so that's why 10 years later I still really enjoy talking about movies and now making them filmmaking has always been my number one and that's one of the reasons I think I love talking about movies is because I, I'm not always trying to deeply analyze the problems with a movie. I'm just excited to see what someone made because I want to 
figure out what got a filmmaker excited about something. You know, what made this person want to make this story or want to write that script? You know, because sometimes it really isn't about the money. You hear about all these deals between studios nowadays and there's all this money involved. But there's plenty of filmmakers out there who just want to make films because they don't know how to do anything else. And that's me. So over the years, it has been quite the journey for me to go from a 21-year-old kid sitting on a bed with a Dragon Ball Z sheet. <sighs> wow, those were good days. And I've been able to achieve a lot here, and I owe all of that to you. Every single one of you who has supported my channel over the years, who've watched my videos, who have encouraged me when I've had ideas and just been there to understand that love of movies. I wasn't getting that before, and, and now I am, and I owe so much of that to you guys. There's a lot of things I owe to you guys. I mean, in regards to film criticism, I did have specific goals. There were things I wanted to achieve. I wanted to get press seats at advanced screenings, and now I do. I have that. I have a reserved seat with my name on it. It feels weird every single time I see it. I hoped to be certified on Rotten Tomatoes, and I am now. And the ultimate goal for me was to become a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association because then I would actually receive the Academy Award screener DVDs at the end of the year. And since I live in Ohio, that's actually really valuable because plenty of those limited release films take a while to get here. And so having those was always a really big want of mine. And I was able to achieve that too. I got invited to the Critics' Choice Awards, and that was just crazy. And so that kind of feels cool, actually, that I was able to do that, because that also was a major goal of mine, was to help legitimize this platform. YouTube has been through a lot of drama over the years. If you tell someone you're a YouTuber, it's like, oh, like, what are you, do you, like, prank people? <laughs> do you, like, do you hit people with fish? <laughs> For a very long time, it was a struggle to get press seats at screenings. In fact, I was denied multiple times. Same with Rotten Tomatoes, and the same with Broadcast Film Critics Association. But over the years, the platform has definitely been looked at in a better light. Yes, I worked hard for that, but it's not like I did it by myself. I mean, you guys are really the ones to thank here, because if I didn't have those numbers to show them, they wouldn't have been like, huh, I wonder about that video stuff. They wouldn't have sat back and, and paid attention to it. That's because of you. You know, it's like hard work plus recognition for that hard work can get you places in life. And I could not have done that without you. And since film criticism was a nice number two for me, and I put forth that effort and I did achieve my goals, when it comes to directing features, when I get that chance, I mean, I am going to work my goddamn ass off to make the best movie I'm capable of making. You know, I don't know if the films that I make are going to be great. I hope that they're at least pretty good and that people find some enjoyment in them or are inspired by them in some way. But my goal now with this channel has shifted. And I'm going to be really honest with you. I know that I am not going to be able to sit here and review every movie that comes out for the rest of my life. I have no plans to cease doing that currently. And I've always promised to you guys that I'll never shut my channel down. Because if I get the opportunity to do some of the things I am currently working on doing, I'm going to find a way to incorporate my channel into that. One of my biggest goals and I'm very inspired by Mark Duplass and his South by Southwest keynote about uh, the Calvary is not coming. It's on YouTube, by far the best speech I have ever heard when it comes to independent filmmaking. I can't give you like a real announcement because I just can't right now. There's not enough information. There's some things that still need to happen, but I am really trying to get a feature made right now, like really trying. And there have been some really great developments over the past few months. And I'm getting really excited about the possibilities. 
So one of my biggest goals with this channel is I want to do something like what Mark Duplass did in that speech. He demystified filmmaking, breaking into the industry. He showed you actually how he did it. He didn't sit there and say, just write, just make movies. Just get out there and make movies. He didn't just say what everyone else says. He's like, actually, do this, 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 this. I'm going to try to take you guys on a journey and show you the process of getting a film actually made and share that with you and hopefully in a way strip away the facade of this mystical, weird Hollywood magic that people always think has to happen for you to get a movie made. I don't believe that. I believe that if you can write a script that is actually really good, that is capable of being made at your level, don't write a script that takes place on Mars. You know, like if your friend owns a truck, write a scene with that truck. If your friend's mom owns the supermarket and she'll let you shoot in it, write a scene in that supermarket. I believe that if you can write something that you can tangibly film, you will find a way to make it as best as you can. If you're careful about what you make and if you really work at it, it is possible, and I am going to do my best to show you guys the entire process of that and really let you in to what it feels like to try to make a movie when you are just somebody from a small town who was raised poor with like very little friends who had an interest in movies, but you knew you had that magic inside of you and you just really wanted to express that somehow. That's me. And I want to find a way to use this channel to not only talk about movies that are coming out and support other filmmakers and be honest when there's a stinker, but use that filmmaking journey segment that I started to really take you guys on mine and show you what it feels like to get one of these actually made doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. It's going to be fucking hard and a nightmare sometimes. And there will more than likely be days when you're making a movie where you're like, Jesus, I'm just going to become a fucking accountant. No one ever accomplished anything great without at least a little pain involved. That's just a fact of life. And if you can accept that, you might make a great movie. And I hope that I can make a pretty good one at least, and share it with you guys. I have more updates coming soon about the two shorts I've done and the distribution for those. I'm excited to share all of this with you, and I'm excited to continue to review movies and hopefully spend many more years with you guys making and talking about films. Thank you so much for 10 years. I mean, that's fucking crazy. I'm just, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. And as always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.